Good afternoon. I want to, I will start by recognizing recognize myself for five minutes. I want to welcome everyone to uh, today's hearings of the Railroad Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Subcommittee to learn more about the challenges facing commuter railroads. And before I begin, let me just say thank everyone for uh, all the witnesses for being flexible with the cancellation of votes uh, yesterday. We moved this hearing back. So thank you for your flexibility here. Uh, and this is a, uh, I think this is a, there's a lot going on right now uh, on Capitol Hill, as we all know. Uh, but uh, I think one thing people really are concerned about all the time is their, their local transportation. So we're here to learn more about the challenges facing commuter railroads. Since this committee has not held a hearing solely on commuter rail in a decade, I thought it was important to convene this hearing. After all, these railroads play a vital role in the daily lives of tens of millions of Americans. In 2017, 29 commuter railroads provided an estimated 510 million passenger trips. It is critical to remember that almost every person on commuter rail means one less car on our congested roads. And we certainly have a lot of congestion in, uh, in the Chicago area. In addition to reducing traffic, reliable commuter rail also contributes to a cleaner environment and lower greenhouse gas emissions. Metro is Chicagoland's commuter rail agency, and I'm an occasional rider of Metro's busiest line, the BNSF. So I know personally both its benefits and frustrations. When Metro passengers get safe, reliable service, it's one of the best systems in the country. But like many legacy commuter railroads, Metro faces tight budgets year after year and has limited resources to address ongoing problems with old equipment and infrastructure that have created more and more headaches for riders. Today, I look forward to hearing from our witnesses about what we can do to minimize these headaches and give Americans reliable commuter rail service. The timing of this hearing is critical because as we begin to draft next year's reauthorization of surface transportation programs, we'll have an opportunity to address commuter rail funding concerns that we will hear about today. In the FAST Act, passenger rail was explicitly part of this reauthorization bill for the first time. It is a top priority of mine to do that again. I've heard from numerous stakeholders about the success of the Consolidated Rail Infrastructure and Safety Improvement Program, known as CRISI, which was established in the FAST Act. And there's a desire to replicate such a program to provide dedicated federal funding for commuter railroads. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses about the potential benefits of creating such a program. Another key funding issue for commuter railroads involves positive train control. I want to be clear that I and this committee fully expect all railroads to meet the 2020 deadline. As commuter rail agencies turn their attention to ensuring that PTC is maintained and functions as intended, I know that they are facing additional expenses. As a result, money has been taken from projected capital programs to cover these costs, and important projects to address the state of good repair backlog have been delayed or canceled. As service reauthorization moves forward, this area will be one the subcommittee will focus on. I hope to hear from Metrolink, who has been a leader in PTC implementation, and others on this panel about their PTC challenges. It is also imperative that commuter railroads have strong partnerships with freight railroads and Amtrak in order to provide reliable service. Unfortunately, in Chicago and other regions of the country, these partnerships are not always working as well as they should. Amtrak, in particular, has fallen short. At Chicago Union Station, which Amtrak owns, infrastructure failures have repeatedly caused serious, serious delays and cancellations for Metra. Amtrak is also demanding that commuter railroads pay significantly more to use hubs like Chicago Union Station, 30th Street Station in Philadelphia, and Union Station here in D.C. I've heard numerous questions raised about these increases and would like to hear more about this today. The relationship between commuter and freight railroads is better, but not without its own issues. As the demand for commuter rail grows, there's a need to expand service. But as any member who has been involved, but as a member, 
and any other members who have been involved in discussion between commuter and freight railroads over service expansion, I can tell you is an arduous process that can take many years to add even a single additional train on some lines. While I'm understanding of the need to ensure freight operations aren't significantly impacted by additional commuter trains, the current process to work out service expansion can and should be better. Finally, I look forward to the discussion about innovation and how Congress and USDOT can help advance research and deployment by commuter railroads of the latest technologies within the industry, like new technologies that help reduce rail grade crossing fatalities and trespassing death. The Federal Railroad Administration has a research and development program that receives around $35 million annually. And I'm interested in ideas from our witnesses on whether the program is functioning well and how we can improve on it in the upcoming surface reauthorization. This is the first hearing of this subcommittee as we begin to look at reauthorization of the FAST Act. I look forward to using this hearing and others this fall to look at important rail topics in working with my colleagues on practical solutions to the challenges ahead.